I'm Clark. And I'm Hillary. And we're the Underwoods. Once, on a date to get milkshakes and dream of our future together, we had such an idea that a contract was immediately written on the back of the menu and signed by the both of us. We were now legally bound to a road trip in a VW bus. A full life continued. Clark graduated college and went to work, we got married, and I continued in my studies towards a master's degree. Through these stages of life, we saved our pennies and obsessively watched Craigslist until we found the right bus. When looking at this bus as a potential purchase, we were wearing our rose-colored glasses and looked past major flaws like these rusted holes in the sides. We naively told ourselves, that is just a quick fix, and the bus was purchased, completing a defining step towards our grand Vaughn voyage. Clark tore into the bus, only to discover more and more flaws in the body, which would require welding, a skill of which he had zero experience, but decidedly would acquire via trial and error in order to fix all of the rust inside of the bus. Winter came, and we bought a home a mere two houses down the street, and the benefits of a garage were acquired. When winter faded into spring, and all of the internal metalwork was completed, I jumped into the van with massive experience, and went to body shops to get the exterior metalwork finished. No one wanted to work on the van. Though deeply disheartened by multiple rejections, he was now on a tight timeline to get the work done himself. Mostly all of the tasks required skills we did not have, but he and I dove right in learning as we went. It was an emotional roller coaster. One would ask, why keep trying to do what you don't know how to do? Well, I've got a theory. I like to call it experience versus expedite. To expedite is to outsource the problem from yourself and hire someone else to do it or buy something prefabricated or already working. To experience is to put yourself up against the problem or do it the long way. Both of these choices work, but challenging experiences are far more rewarding and memorable, and I opt for that choice as often as possible. We jumped into our bus and drove away into the sunset without a care in the world. Just kidding, not having even left the driveway, the challenges continue. A back shock mount bolt break, a punctured gas tank that was full, running out of gas on a test run, having a flat tire, the capability to reverse mysteriously disappearing, an air leak in the carburetor, and the horn still did not honk, and the gas gauge only showed empty. But at last, after many more hours of effort, the bus was roadworthy and we were headed towards the west to chase our romantic dream. became evident that our journey's path was experiencing abnormally hot temperatures. Also, though the vehicle was 45 years old, had no AC, and was very, 
very slow. These challenges were uncomfortable, yes, but we welcomed them as a mountain of memories in the making. Moving further west on I-40, from New Mexico to Arizona, scenery began to change. Some beautiful days were spent and excellent camping spots put to great use. We reached the Grand Canyon and enjoyed days of beautiful weather, colorful sunsets, and hiking all through its grandeur. From the Grand Canyon, we traveled to Sequoia National Park, but due to the massive heat wave following us, we would make stops that look like this. Directly after this, in the middle of a California desert, we broke down. When you're living in your vehicle, a breakdown like this produces a very strong feeling and a complicated situation. But after several nights in a motel and nearly selling the bus, we towed it to a nearby town where a VW shop quickly identified the small issue. We were then able to proceed onto Sequoia National Park. We were stoked. Then we got a flat tire. Then we were stoked again. The landscape of Sequoia National Park is intoxicating and breathtaking and speechless and all other words that describe being completely in awe. The next few days we spent hiking and swimming and romping around all of the terrain. Somewhere along this area, it is suspected that the only key to the bus was lost. It was a very low point for us as we climbed into the bus and realized that the only key had been lost somewhere along our four hour hike. So for over an hour in the pouring rain that conveniently rolled in, 
Clark managed to somehow hotwire the van out of the rat's nest of wires through trial and error because we had no cell phone reception. But we were able to make it out of Sequoia and cruised up north to Yosemite. We weren't in Yosemite but 30 minutes and Clark began to exclaim, I can't shift anymore. <laughs> Laughing or crying? Tell me. I don't even know. <laughs> Emotions are running high at the Underwood camp. It's like a... It's like one of those laugh cries, you know? Where you're like, I'm crying, and it's funny. <laughs> but which way do you feel? Oh, I feel sad, but I also feel really bad. But it's also hilarious. <laughs> oh, okay. Whoop. This is it, utter failure. When Hillary said, do we leave in the van, do we leave in the car with all of the early failures, the first five failures, I said, no, I've fought too hard. I've come too far. I need utter failure to stop me. This is that point. <laughs> We've hit the end. The great Bond Voyage. <laughs> we did pretty good, though. We made it 2,000 miles. Yeah. Now stranded in the nearest small town on a holiday weekend with no businesses open, we may do without transportation. We hitchhiked into Yosemite with a Spanish-speaking couple and their boys. Yosemite is gorgeous and was thoroughly enjoyed. After weighing our limited options, feeling that another breakdown was inevitable, and being pressed for time, we made the decision to rent a U-Haul and tote the bus home behind us. It was a beautifully uneventful ride home. Upon returning home, I ordered the $7 part that was on a several week back order, finally got it in the mail, and brought the bus back to life. Well, we pulled it off. We bought the crusty van, we turned it into the pretty van, we drove it to California, and broke it. But then we made it back. We dragged it back. <laughs> and here we are, and it ruled. And here we are, yep. And here's some things we learned. We learned, one, cars have been improved upon greatly. Air conditioning is a really great modern feature of Air cars. Air conditioning rules when it's super hot. Yeah. New cars are fast. New cars are fast. Well, well this car <laughs> is slow. <laughs> so slow. We only passed two people, I think, the entire trip. Mm -hmm. Over 2,000 miles, we passed two cars. <laughs> and one of them was breaking down, I think, on the side of the highway. <laughs> yeah, but we, we counted it. Also, if you're looking at the weather for camping, the low might not happen until 4 a.m. Yep. So that low of 75 sounds really nice, but it's like it happens 85 at, yeah, five ish yeah, when you're going to sleep. It didn't happen until 4 a.m. Yeah. But all things considered, it ruled. We made tons of memories. We experienced the edge of every emotion, and I'm <laughs> glad we did it even though the van wasn't really ready, we weren't really ready, but the timing is never right. So. If you're planning a trip, if you got an idea, do it before you're ready because <laughs> perfection never arrives. Yeah, that's true. We could have spent another like mm -hmm. year fixing the van. Yeah, yeah. Probably. It wasn't perfect, but we did it and yeah, it ruled. We did do it. And I realized that you can fix a lot of things that I didn't know you could fix. Well, thank you. And I realized you're very resilient to testing situations. <laughs> I don't know how much of a happy camper I was, but... You were a very happy camper. There was only like 
three really low moments. And one, I lost the key. And two, we broke down twice. So yeah, two and three, yeah. Two and three, we broke down. So yeah. there you have it. Yeah. Bon voyage. We're still married. We're still married. Yeah. I still love you. <laughs> we out.